Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday evening, December 11th, 2022. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. And another week has passed. They're just flying by. This was an extraordinarily difficult week for me. But, um, made it through and here we are. Again, this will be my weekly update that I'll be putting on YouTube where we're going to go over climate-related items and methane and sea ice for the week. And I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. And um, it's cold where I am. And I know it's cold where a lot of people are, but anyway got to do the best we can. So, we're going to start with the uh, Climate Reanalyzer, just with an overview of what's going on today. And this is the maximum temperature for 2 meters air temperature. And it sees all these purples. Um, that's like down to minus 30 C and then see that's over a lot of Russia and the Arctic region a lot of Canada and Greenland but then we've got these aquas which are going to be warmer than normal you'll see here's our flat view and we've got whites down here in Argentina and a few across Africa and a lot over Australia and the white color denotes about 40 C or 104 degrees Fahrenheit or higher and um, yeah I was saying around a hundred degrees or higher and then I was corrected by one of my viewers that 40 C equals 104 degrees Fahrenheit and so that four degrees can make a difference and I agree it can so um, thank you for correcting me on that and now two meter temperature anomaly for today and uh, it's it's we just had havoc up here this week in the Arctic um, with the temperatures and I'll show you we're gonna look at a Sam Karana post and um, but we're going to do this first. Here we are today. This is 2 meter temperature anomaly. We've still got reds and pinks over this Chukchi Sea area. And sea ice has not come back in that area. And it's brown over a lot of the region. So, um, you know, the light brown, it's about... 6C higher than normal. Dark brown is about 10 to 12C higher than normal. Then when you move into the bright reds, that's about 18 to 22C or 20C higher than normal. And then the pinks are getting on up there like 24C and so on and so we've got a lot of browns across the Arctic here and over Greenland and Canada coming down through North America and the US so that's warmer than normal and then you've got all these blues and purples right next to it And here's the flat view. 
and they moved their uh, their overview and so here we are today worldwide we're 0.59 C higher than normal the northern hemisphere is at 0.84 C the Arctic is at 4.29 C the Antarctic is at 0.31 C the southern hemisphere is at 0.33 C and the tropics are at 0.35 C higher than normal but it's been um, warmer than that this week um, it was uh, I think it, the highest was like 6.63 um, C higher than normal um, Sam Coriana did a post on Monday the 5th this is from Arctic News and the title of it is Arctic o Ocean Overheating and so I'll leave the link below and y'all can look at it and of course he adds to it for a few weeks and that's fine we just know we need to keep coming and looking at what he's adding to it and saying that right now we're still we still got the La Nina dragging on but the El Nino is about to hit just any time and and uh, so that's that'll create higher temperatures and um, here's sea surface temperatures this is from what is this from not sure this must be um, Earth Null School anyway the image below shows high sea surface temperature anomalies near, near the Bering Strait on December 2nd with a hot blob in the North Pacific Ocean see he's using my language now there's our blob with um, where sea surface temperature anomalies were reaching as high as 7 degrees C or 12.6 degrees Fahrenheit the jet stream is stretched out vertically from pole to pole enabling hot air to enter the Arctic from the Pacific Ocean and from the Atlantic Ocean here this is this images from climate reanalyzer says the image below shows a forecast for December 5th of two meter temperature anomalies um, um, near the top end of the scale and let's see there you go and it says on December 6th the Arctic was 6.63 degrees C or 11.93 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than normal than with the baseline that they're using and here's what it looked like that day see see all these reds and pinks and it's even going up into the light pink and that's um, moving into like 26 to 32 C higher than normal over that Chukchi Sea and Beaufort Sea area and then here over the Baffin Bay and then here over the Kara Sea in Russia so it's been um, really high all week 
and um, then he goes on and then and we'll show this too um, as part of our sea ice tonight given that we're still in the depth of a persistent La Nina these currently very high air temperature anomalies indicate the ocean temperatures are very high and the ocean heat is heating up the air over the Arctic. Additionally, ocean heat is melting the sea ice from below. Accordingly, Arctic sea ice has barely increased in thickness over the past 30 days. And it's according to this animation. This is from the U.S. Navy and we'll be looking at that too. This leaves only a very short time for Arctic sea ice to grow back in thickness before the melting season starts again which means that there will be little or no latent heat buffer to consume heat when the melting season starts. Furthermore, rising temperatures and changes to the jet stream contribute to formation of a fresh water lid at the sea surface at higher la latitudes, resulting in further heating up of the Arctic Ocean. As a result, more heat threatens to penetrate sediments at the sea floor of the Arctic Ocean that contain vast amounts of methane in hydrates and free gas and result in abrupt release of huge amounts of methane dramatically pushing up temperatures globally. So, um, you know, we'll see all of that in when we look at our sea ice. So, that's basically his post there. And now we'll go back to Climate Reanalyzer. Here's precipitation in clouds today. And the blue is snow. The green is rain. So it's raining coming up to Alaska and these Aleutian Islands. And <coughs> Just lots of atmospheric rivers around the globe. There's the flat view. And then here are the jet loops. It's not a stream anymore. You can see all that cold air swooping down. It's not being held in at all. And every time we look at the, these jet loops, it's worse than before. And I talked about um, the loops interchanging between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And this has been going on regularly for about the last two weeks now. And here in the Pacific view we can see see this loop uh, coming down from the north northern hemisphere and here's the equator on this dotted line and then it slopes down and part of it goes further south and then it splits and comes back up so is total chaos. And then we've got loops over the Antarctic too. So, you know, it's just, we don't know. We're in no man's land. Here's sea surface temperature anomaly. And they took off their overview when they redid the website. And so we can see 
we still have browns and reddish browns up here coming up from the Atlantic into the Barents Sea. The Kara Sea still has some browns. So the dark brown is about um, 3C higher than normal and the reddish brown is 4C higher. The bright red is about 5C higher. When you get into the light pink that's 6C higher and that's as high as this chart goes and you know Sam Corinna uses Earth Null School because it'll go higher than the 6C higher than normal so we can just assume when it's in that light pink it's at least 6C higher and maybe more than that and we still had these hot spots off the coast of North America and the Gulf of Mexico is heating up it's more brown and most of the Atlantic is in some shade of brown and we're getting this hot spot a big hot spot forming in the South Atlantic region just east of South America and we're still seeing browns in uh, these seas in the interior bodies of water here in the Pacific there's our blob <coughs> in the North Pacific you can see it's turning brown around Kamchatka, Russia and red red and brown around Japan and then you know it's brown all the way down through Indonesia and across the Pacific and here in this Tasman Sea uh, as it gets more into their late spring and almost summer season in the southern hemisphere uh, typically this Tasman Sea starts really heating up and that's the area between Australia and New Zealand and uh, they usually get a blob a hot blob down here in the South Pacific as well so we'll see what develops during their summer as things progress here and we still have blues uh, which is lower than normal over this equatorial or in the equatorial Pacific region <coughs> So there's that. Now we're going to move on to methane. I have two days worth of NOAA data to go over and then uh, one day's worth on CAMS. So we're going to start with Friday the 9th and we're tracking two levels now now that we're using this different model, it's the heat model and this is what NOAA's using to report the methane on and that changed when? at the end of October so um, here we are with the Met Op B satellite in the morning on the night at this thousand millibar level which is about the same as um, surface level on CAMS and the mean or average was 1840 parts per billion the high reading was 2209 and this pink color that's a range between 2000 parts per billion 
and whatever is this highest number, and in this case 2209. And these pinks are over the Atlantic, and here over the Kara Sea, and here uh, next to Russia and Japan there. In the afternoon, the mean was 1842, and the high reading was 2184. And then on the Met Op C satellite in the morning, the mean was 1845, and the high reading was 2192. And um, I want to warn y'all, this met op C in the afternoon uh, for what is it four days four or five days in a row we've got a ton of missing data and so but I'm counting it it is what it is and I made a note on my spreadsheet but we're missing almost all of the US all of Mexico a lot of Canada in Alaska and we're missing um, Eastern Siberia in Kamchatka, New Zealand and um, Papua New Guinea some of Australia and it's a little bit different during the days but anyway um, it is what it is that it, it's white so it's completely missing data so in the afternoon here the, even with the missing data the mean was 1847 and the high reading was 2266 <coughs> and now we're going to go Uh, to the 10th in the morning back to the Met Op B satellite 1000 millibar the mean or average was 1842 the high reading was 2208 in the afternoon the mean was 1842 the high reading was 2166. On the Met Op C in the morning, the mean was 1845. The high reading was 2208. And here's the missing data again. And see, it's in a slightly different place um, where we're missing about half of the U.S and now we're missing um, part of Africa, Saudi Arabia, Middle East and coming on up. So here we are, Met Opsy in the afternoon. The mean was 1852 and the high reading was 2263. <coughs> so um, Here's our, my daily uh, recording for the uh, 1000 millibar level. So the ninth averaged out to be 1843.5 parts per billion. That was a decrease over the day before of 2 parts per billion. And then the tenth averaged out to be 1845.25 and that was an increase of 1.75 and we started out um, in our show last week we, or we ended up here at 1841.5 so we've got an increase overall of 3.75 and we're taking into account five days of quite a bit missing data 
but this is these are the numbers that they gave us. So I'll show you what happened this week. So this was last Saturday. We were 1841.5. And then Sunday it went up 0.25. Monday it went up 1.5. Tuesday was when we started having the missing data. It went up 3.75 in one day. And then on the Wednesday the 7th it went down 1.75. Thursday it went up 0.25. Friday down 2. And Saturday back up 1.75. Here's our weekly, um, here's what the chart is so far. Um, our weekly data starting from October the 29th. We've now got seven weeks of data. And so for the last two weeks we've gone up. And um, you know it's supposed to be going down. Uh, because it's supposed to be in the cooling period for methane, but we've got two weeks in a row with it going up. And this 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 week was a high high increase of three point seven five. Now if we want to see um, compare it to last year, we can see what happened for the week of okay the week of the 11th see it went down 2.5 and it was steadily going down well now last year we peaked out on October the 2nd and you know it does some stair stepping it's not going to go down every single week in a row you know it will do some stair stepping and but it was it was going down pretty consistently um, but then the week of the 18th it went yeah, it went down 5. On uh, the week of the 25th, it went up 4.5. And then on the 1st, it went up 0.5. And then we bottomed out. We, we were at our lowest on methane January 14th of last year. So that was a slow, I mean, a sl uh, not a slow, I didn't mean a slow, um, a short period of, of decrease, short period, and the rest of it was increase. So there's that. Now, Back to our methane. Back to the ninth. Now we're going to look at the 487 millibar level. And that's as close as we can get to uh, 500 HPA on CAMS for a comparison. On the Met Op B in the morning. We were at 1914 parts per billion. The high reading was 2374. And see all this. It's heavy all across the Arctic there. In the afternoon, the mean was 1918. 
the high reading was 2412. On the Met Op C in the morning, the mean was 1882. The high reading was 2155. And here's our missing data again. And uh, so in the afternoon, the mean was 1883. And the high reading was 2312. And then back to the 10th in the morning uh, for the 487 level, met op B. Uh, the mean was 1916. Now here's his bike, 2503. It's not usually that high. We don't know where it happened somewhere in the pink zone. And in the afternoon, the mean was 1917. The high reading was 2431. And met op C in the morning, the mean was 1882. The high reading was 2183. And in the afternoon, the mean was 1882 again. So even with the missing data, it was the same as the morning reading. And the high reading was 2168. So for the ninth, that averaged out to be 1899.25. And that was a decrease of 0.75 over the day before. And the tenth averaged out at 1899.25. So no change from the day before. Now we started the week at 1895.5 by Saturday. So we ended up with an increase of 3.75. So let's see what happened this week. So Saturday we were 1895.5. Sunday it went up 1.5. Monday it went up 1.25. Tuesday no change and that was the first day of missing data Wednesday it went up 1.75 Thursday no change Friday down 0.75 and Saturday no change and here's our chart here and so so far what what it's done, it's gone, uh, we've done some stair stepping with up, uh, we went up the week of the 12th, 2.75, then we went down three weeks in a row, and then this week we went up 3.75, so there's that. We'll close those. And now we'll move on to CAMS. This is the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services website. They're out of the EU. And we're going to look at Saturday the 10th. We're going to start with the Arctic view and surface level. So what you're going to see uh, when we get uh, when we get to the global view in the Antarctic view, you'll see that it, uh, methane's going down in the southern hemisphere, and so it's got to be going up exponentially in the northern hemisphere then to have an overall rise. 
and we're seeing that um, these background colors see are into the yellows and see we've got red popping up here this is coming up through the sea ice in the Arctic now watch here next to this new Siberian Islands look at that now that's in the forecast period on Tuesday so it's coming up from the seafloor and Komsomolets is still billowing see on a daily basis and we've got this spot in the North Kara Sea that comes and goes with um, high readings too we've got high readings see all the way across Russia here and see these waves moving out it's like a kaleidoscope and Koktober Alaska that's high now the interior of Alaska has gone down but look at Canada uh, we have high readings here in the tar sands region and from North Dakota it's just like hemorrhaging and it goes north and then it goes south look at this and the US has been awful this week it's been awful most of the northern hemisphere this week our hot spot in the North Atlantic here is coming back to life see there and streaming off of Norway there and now we'll go to the North Pole view okay here we can see uh, pretty much all of the well most of the northern hemisphere and um, see this whole Europe areas really high and <clears throat> UK Ireland and so on see streaming out in the Atlantic just solid solid dark and that's a range that dark color is between uh, 2160 and 10,000 parts per billion Here's the Persian Gulf, here's India, and see how it's spilling over um, in the Bengal Bay there. Here's China filling up and spilling over. Now that's really high methane when you see those waves just moving out. See, watch this. Here it comes spilling over then we got the greens uh, greens and the light greens and yellow waves moving around and here in the US now they've had a lot of rain and whenever there's a lot of precipitation then um, it only takes a, about a day or two for it to turn into high methane readings and we saw also on the uh, uh, 2 meter temperature anomaly on climate reanalyzer this area is in the brown so these are warmer than normal temperatures so you're going to get methane
Now we're going to go to the global view. And we can see that um, that background color, the main background color, has gone down to the 1840 parts per billion. There's very little 1860 left and that's um, that's where it's coming up. We can see the differentiation now um, with the with the main main color being lower than where it's coming up around the coastlines. In Antarctica, and we're seeing this navy blue. Uh, more of that too. That's a lower reading. That's 18, uh, 1820 parts per billion with this navy blue. In the Pacific, um, here's a touch in the Atlantic, and here in the Indian Ocean, and the West Pacific. And <clears throat> you can see um, the the methane really pops out when you get those darker or lower readings as the background color. Now I'm gonna show you the Antarctic view so here's the western peninsula and here's South America and this is methane coming up Let's see all around this western peninsula And here at the Brunt Ice Shelf, and this little island, I don't know the name of that. But see, that's coming up through the sea ice. And along uh, a lot of the coastline areas, you'll see the, the lighter color, the more aqua color. And that's methane coming up. Here it is, the Amory Ice Shelf. And here on the east side, you'll see it popping up. We're going to see more and more methane coming up down here as, as things heat up more and more. And so that aqua color that we're seeing is 1860 parts per billion. So when the main background color was 1860, we couldn't we couldn't see any difference in we couldn't see it coming up around the coastlines. But now we can. Go back to the global view. And here's five hundred HPA and you can see how heavy it is and it's coming uh, further south with those heavy readings even look over India southern India heavy and even through Europe and here in the Atlantic And then total column. 
and here we've got this is China coming down into southern Asia and uh, here's India and then this is um, southern Asia like I think that's Myanmar and Burma and also I want to show you this other view let's go to the North Atlantic view look at these high readings see normally we don't see it high total column over any any other areas except China really that's but now see it's it's uh, it's getting worse because methane's going up so there's that now uh, I'm going to get ready to show you some ozone and I want to show the Pacific view we had an ozone hole open up in this West Pacific this week see over here that's right next to the Philippines it opened up I think it was Friday go back to Friday yeah so here's where it started opening up on Friday and that's in the danger zone with inside that black the black line is shows that inside there's the danger zone and that's the bluish purple and that's uh, between 200 and 220 Dobson units and the solid yellow is considered a good ozone reading that's 300 Dobson units so anything below that is thin and it's been it's been kind of coming and going but I wanted to show you today here's where it was where it started out today see uh, here's a little spot and here's another one and I'll show you what the forecast is with this see so it's hanging around normally we don't see this not in the Pacific and then uh, there's a big aqua patch too and that's a hole see and it it comes comes over to the mainland oh look and we've got a hole I didn't even see that up here in Canada watch what that's going to start up here it comes see the aqua coming across there it is so we're going to ha have a hole opening up um, coming across the Hudson Bay in Canada so we're getting more and more of these uh, thin thin areas and we're losing the ozone layer and 
we've got aqua down here over in Mexico and Texas and so on. So the more aqua you see, that's thinning out. <clears throat> and here's the Antarctic today. Let's see. And it's, it's shrinking down, but um, it's still two layers down into the danger zone. So there's that. And I wanted to show also um, your sulfur dioxide today. This is uh, still coming up from Hawaii, and this sulfur dioxide that originally came up from Hawaii has now circled the globe and is uh, spreading out. We're seeing higher readings across all, all of the northern hemisphere here. And then we've got a new high reading. Um, here, this is Peru, um, that's probably volcanic, and here it is at 500 HPA, so, um, see it's holding, uh, it's holding pretty concentrated even at that high level, halfway up in the atmosphere. And then here's where it shot up to 500 HPA here in South America. And I already showed that and that. And there's our global view for ozone for today. And um, not quite ready for those earthquakes. So we'll look at that in a minute. Okay, that was a lot. Now we're going to move on to sea ice. There's just a lot to go over, you know, when you've got, when you're looking at all these different aspects. And I do daily reporting on my Subscribestar page. And if anyone's interested in coming over there, it's only $5 a month. And the link is in the description box below. And, you know, we, we cover all this stuff. Not in, well, not completely everything all the time, but, you know, I do highlights every single day pretty much. So here we are. Uh, this is from Climate Reanalyzer. This is the ice concentration and snow cover. So wherever the land is and you see white, that's at least one centimeter of snow or more. And then where you see kind of the bluish white over the water, that's the sea ice. See, it's coming back pretty good in the Hudson Bay here. Uh, struggling in the Baffin Bay. It's trying. It's still struggling on this east side of Greenland. Uh, struggling around Svalbard. We've had some melting uh, because of that warmer temperature up here this week. We had melting on the east side of the ice and also. Um, over here in the Chukchi Sea and Beaufort Sea, but it's starting to refreeze a little bit. And just see a little extent coming down here in the Kara Sea. It started to come back um, around the Russia coastline in the Sea of O Coast and a little fringe of ice around Alaska too. 
So let's go through our slideshow. Here we were last Sunday, the 4th, and you can see more open water there. So we'll just click through and see what, what it does. So here's the 5th, 6th, yeah, you can see the melting there. Let's, let's show that again. See, here it was on the 5th. Now watch. There it goes. 6th, 7th, 8th. Now it's refreezing. 9th, 10th, and here we are today. So there's that. Now we'll look at the Navy, U.S. Navy models, and this is Arctic sea ice thickness for today. So we can see, um, you know, it's just barely thickening, and it's just taken a long time for anything to happen here. And. So, uh, the dark purple is about one meter thick. The navy blue is about 1.25 meters thick. The dark aqua is about, what, what is that, 1.5 meters thick. The bright aqua is about two to two and a half meters thick. And then, if you're lucky, you'll see some uh, green and yellow and red and that's the thicker sea ice but you won't see much of it and this goes along uh, with climate reanalyzer here's our ice thin ice coming back in the Hudson Bay and a little bit here in the Baffin Bay it's trying to reach out to Svalbard, but the water's still warm around Svalbard. And a little bit coming back here in the Kara Sea and along the Russia coastlines. And we're seeing some thicker ice, the aqua, around some of the coastlines. The ice drift will push it up against the coastline and make it a little thicker. And then uh, still struggling here in the Chukchi Sea, coming across in the Bering Strait. And here's the Sea of Ocoast, and we're getting um, thin ice along that Russia coastline. And this is what's left of the thicker ice, just barely thickening. Here's the 30-day animation. This was updated to yesterday, so the data goes back three weeks, and the forecast period goes out to next Saturday. So it's just gradually and see going more towards the towards the navy blue now which is what was that one point one point two five meters thick and this hole in the Chukchi Sea is starting to fill in with a little thin layer. And you can see this ice kind of moving back and forth. It's always in motion. And the ice drift will, you know, it'll go, it'll slosh back and forth.
But this is troubling that this thicker area is not not getting that much thicker and we're not seeing a lot of reds or even many greens. The green is three meters thick. The red is about four to five meters thick. So we have a little spot of red here just above Greenland and a couple of spots along uh, these little island coastlines of Canada. <coughs> we had an earthquake up here today. I, f I think it was a 4.4. 4. So there's that. Here's the Beaufort Sea Ice Thickness. Here's Canada. See these little spots of red. And it's less when the ice drift uh, pulls it pulls the ice away from the coastline. And so that thicker ice gets folded under. And then uh, when it's pushed back towards the coastline, it starts getting a little thicker. So here's this hole still in this Chukchi Sea area, but not much aqua forming out here. I would like to see it, but it's just not coming off there. And see the white down here? That's where it was pulled away from the coastline. Here's the 30-day animation, and this was updated to today. So the forecast goes out to next Sunday. So you see the red, it just disappears, and then it comes back as it's being pushed back towards the coastline. Not much change up here in this Beaufort Sea. So there's that. Now we'll go to the Antarctic. Now th it's melting down here. It's in high melt. Sun is up and it is in high melt. You see all the holes in the ice and it's ragged around the edges and uh, not much ice at all on this east side. It's almost all gone. We can see the holes. Uh, no ice around these coastlines. And here's some thicker ice with the aqua on this west side and still in the Weddell Sea this is the majority of the thicker ice. But it's, you know, it's being whittled down. Here's the 30-day animation. Again, updated to yesterday. So the forecast goes out to next Saturday. Look at this. Now, uh, normally most of the sea ice melts during their summer. And then it refreezes during their winter time. But it's really, really going down, isn't it? So there's that. Here's National Snow and Ice Data Center. Sea ice concentration. This is for yesterday. Um, here's the regrowth in the Hudson Bay. 
Let's see me in here. And these brown lines, that's the median. So we're still well under the median for the regrowth. And here's where it's refreezing here in the Chukchi Sea. We still have some blues, meaning it's not as concentrated like there, there's um, open water. It's not just solid ice. And here on this east side, so it's still not very concentrated. And here's the extent chart as of yesterday. The blue line is this year. The dotted line is 2012. Now we saw this week we dipped below 2012 and we're still below 2012. Um, but it's, it's taken a more upward upward angle here, a steeper angle. So it looks like we're going to meet up with 2012. And they used 2012 kind of as a guide because that was the least extent in most recent years. That's been kind of our guide. Here's the Antarctic. <clears throat> Look at all the dark blue. So that ice will go really fast wherever it's dark blue. And here's uh, the extent chart. So we're tracking the melting and um, the blue line for this year and this dark line for last year running parallel. So we met up with last year this week, and so we're just running parallel with last year. And that's all of those. And now we'll move on. Okay, so here, here's a uh, and that's a world view for today. This is the Arctic and that big black circle is where it's dark. So um, all of the ocean there is in the dark. Just this tippy point of Greenland is still in the light. And so let's see. Here's sea ice concentration today. And you can see uh, once it gets to yellows and greens, those are holes in the ice. So this, uh, it really, that warm air did a number on this ice this week. Melted here on the east and um, in the west. It's trying to refreeze. There's still that hole there. Here's the Hudson Bay. So let's go back to last Sunday. Here we were last Sunday. So this was, this hole was bigger last Sunday. So let's just click through and see what it did this week. So here we go. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and here we are today. So all these pinks, uh, the, any anything that's not solid white, 
means it's not fully concentrated. It means there's gaps in in the eyes. So there's that. Yeah, I haven't even tried the nighttime layer today. So we're going to explore this together. This looks pretty good so far. Okay, here's Greenland. Let's go in here. Here's the Lincoln Sea. You can see it's broken up. Here's the nearest strait. Look at all that open water. Look at this. That's open. That refreeze is not doing very well at all. Here's pieces of ice, but <clears throat> not very good. See all the open water? Here's the Baffin Bay. There's the ice there. And here's where it's, you know, it's trying to come across to this west side of Greenland. Here's the ice. But it's struggling. Here's the ice. Here's the southern tip that's in the light. Here's the east side. Here's Iceland. Here's the ice. Just a little fringe. See? Very thin, fringy ice. And then it's more substantial up here. Okay, here's this north side of Greenland, and here's the ice, and you see the dark, so those are cracks in the ice, that's why you'll see that it's not totally concentrated. Here's Svalbard. Here's the ice here. Here's a light. That's at Long Year BN. And here's some ice coming out here. Here's Franz Josef Land. And See the ice is coming out past that. Here's Novaya Zemlya. Here's the ice coming down in the Kara Sea. Here's the Yamal Peninsula. Here's some more fringy ice forming. Those are clouds. Let's look at yesterday. See if we can see. Oh yeah, that's better. See, there's the ice. Here's open water. See, there's quite a bit of open water around the coastlines. Here's Severnaya Zemlya. Here's come some mullets. And this is where we see that methane just billowing and billowing right around here. And see, there's some open water. This, this has got to be quite a bit warmer. Let's see. I'm going to just 
try this. My surface temperature. And we've got to turn off the nighttime layer for this. Here we go. Yeah, see the aqua moving into the green? That's warmer. That's... <coughs> That's um, uh, 200, right where my pointer is, that's 259.5 degrees Kelvin. And it freezes uh, Kelvin, I think fresh water freezes at 272 Kelvin. So salt water freezes at a lower temperature so you know that's why you see warm warm water there or warmer see you could actually see the whole where they're not clouds, you can see where the ice is. So, I'll turn that off. Okay, let's go back to this. So this is yesterday. Let's go to today. Yeah, see. That's still a pretty good view. And then this is the laptop C. See? see there's see the big cracks. Here's Tame Your Peninsula. Here's the Russia coastline. Here's our sea ice. There it is. Here's New Siberian Islands. So we saw uh, methane coming up here on camps. The reddish coming up right here. And then we saw more the reddish here but we were seeing yellow yellows here in the lap lap sea and yellows coming up over here in this east siberian sea of course these are areas that have huge methane deposits in the sediment there's the ice this is an excellent view today. Look at that. It's almost like daylight. Here's Wrangell Island. Okay, here's some clouds. Here's the Bering Strait. Now let's see. Trying to see the ice here. Hard to look. No ice. That was on the ninth. So that see the little wisps? They're counting all of that. But as of the ninth, there was not ice coming across the Bering Strait. It's open. I wonder if it's normally like that this time of year. Let's see. Here's last year. Yep. 
Yeah, there was ice last year. See, this time last year. Look at how far down the ice was. It's totally different this year. Look at that. This is this year. So it's a lot less. <clears throat> so here's the eyes. This is the truck you see here. Here's the hole that they're it's trying to fill in. Here's Barrow, Alaska, that tippy point and that little light there. And now we're coming into sea ice. Here's the Beaufort Sea. Here's Koktovik, Alaska. Look at this. Here's where it's pulled away from the coastline, see? Well, when this layer works, it really works. I mean, you can see everything. Look at this. Here's Canada. Here's the ice. Look at this. See the big crack along the coast? There's some more big cracks. Let's see. So that's open water in those cracks. Okay, here's Ellesmere Island. Let's see if we can see it better. Yeah, here's yesterday. That's better. Let's see. See all these cracks. And this is the thicker ice. It's where the aqua is. We're back to where we started from. Let's look at the North Pole. See if we can see anything. Wow. Look. See these cracks? Here's the North Pole. And got cracks going all the way across. Oh, that's the 8th. I got sidetracked. Here's our ice. So I want to go back. Here at the Bering Strait. For today. Yeah, see? That's open. just starting to come in around this Alaska coastline. So there's that. Ooh, what's this? See that bright? I wonder what that is. It's streaming up on the cloud. See if that was there yesterday. Nope. Look. That's interesting. Okay. 
Okay. Now close your eyes. Going to the Antarctic, it's going to be bright. See, I told you. Look at this. Okay, let's let's look at our iceberg we're tracking. A76 out here. It's still there. It's under some clouds, but it's still there. So let's see what it did this week. So here's where it was last Sunday. Not much change, huh? So we'll just click through. Here's Monday, big, big cloud. Tuesday, it's rotated to the left. Wednesday, now it's rotating back to the right. Thursday, big rotation. Friday, look at straight up and down. Saturday, a little to the right. And here we are today. So it's about at the one o'clock position now. But it's in the same area. It's just going back and forth, back and forth. It's still intact. Okay, let's come on down. What a view today. Look at this. Okay, here's the Western Peninsula. This is the Weddell Sea, and here's the ice. Look at that big hole. And uh, this is the Larsen Sea ice shelf. Now, let's go back yesterday. So, this is, I don't know if that's a cloud or what that is. Another weird layer. Anyway, look at this. That's a big hole. Coming on down. And here's the Weddell Ice Shelf. This big area, that's where A76 broke off. And we've been tracking it ever since. And look at all this open water. Here's the Brunt Ice Shelf. This is an area we're seeing methane come up. Also on the Western Peninsula uh, is another area that methane comes up. See, the, this is the Halloween crack. Look, going all the way across. And this is a continuation of the Brunt Ice Shelf. And you can see the melt going on See, it's in high melt. Let's come back down. Okay, now I want to focus. Here's Pine Island Glacier, and let's see if we can get a better view. Good. So here's the night. We zoom in. Look, that hole's bigger. 
So that's open water there. And this is uh, sea ice that froze up there. Cloud. We are today cloud. Now, uh, here's the Thwaites Glacier, also known as the Doomsday Glacier. And we saw last week that this tongue had separated. Here it was on the 7th. That was Wednesday. Let's see. And see the pieces breaking off here. But um, here's the tongue. See how that's just disintegrating? See open water there. So that's that's going away fast. Look at that. So here it was last Sunday. Let's see. So we can't really see much of this Thwaites Glacier. It's just too cloudy. Hard to even make out. But here it was Wednesday. Coming on down. So this is a lot of open water around the coastline. Here's the Ross Sea. So here's the ice down here. And uh, see it's melted right around this ice shelf. And this is the Ross ice shelf up here. Here's Ross Island. There's Mount Erebus. Let's see if we can get a better view. Here's yesterday. Here's the ninth. Okay, the seventh was a good view. Let's see. It's casting a shadow there. And the size is melting. See? Look at this. So this was Wednesday. We could see all this open water. Here we are today. Then coming on down. See it melting. And the southeast edge. Not much ice here, see. Look at this. Okay, here's the Toten Glacier. This is another one I track. There's a cloud. Okay, look at this. Yesterday. Now this is the best view I've had of this since I can remember. And this is the tongue. And see the crack? It's going further up. And then it's cracking. Uh, another crack to the right. So, we've got to watch that. Look at all of this. Open. Open right up to the coastline. See? Open. There's a little ice. Let's look at today. Ooh, cloudy. Coming around. 
Here's the Avery Ice Shelf. Another place where we see methane coming up. <clears throat> so this is cloudy today. Lots of clouds. Here was Thursday. Let's see, there's open water. Got a few clouds over it. back to today. Here we go. Almost done. Look at this. Not much ice. This is the north end. That's in high melt. And back. Back to where we started from. So there's that. <clears throat> now, I'm sorry this is going long, but we just have a lot. Uh, I just took a few pictures for today. 175 earthquakes today. Look at all these fours. These are the smaller dots. Look, here's one in Australia. There was a 6.0 here in Mexico. Here's a couple of fives along the Antarctic Ridge. Bad movement on the Juan de Fuca plate. And here's that four, I think it was a 4.4 .4 up in Canada. Here it is, Let's see, in this, uh, in this archipelago. Uh, 4.2 on Somerset Island, Nunavut, Canada. And this came in at 6.53 this morning, Pacific Time. So this is an Arctic earthquake. And down here, um, next to the Cocos Plate, a 6.0 near El Tiqui, Mexico. I don't know if that's how you say it. And that came in today at 6.31 a.m. And then this is a 5.2 down next to it. Here, on the edge of the Juan de Fuca plate, a 4.0. And this came in today at 9.19 this morning. And that's all of that. And so now we'll look at the website. We've got 170 right now. See what happened this week. Seven days, all magnitudes. One thousand nine hundred and fifty six earthquakes this week. Look at all of this. It's like a traffic jam. So up here. Um, 4.4, another Arctic earthquake near Yang Mayan, right on the line, and see movement down through the Atlantic, and then fives coming down, fives. So we saw this 6.0 um, in Mexico, and it's all around the Ring of Fire. What were 
What were the other big ones? Now, the Fiji area had 16. These were 4s and 5s. And I'm trying to think. I don't remember seeing any 6s this week, except for that one today. That may be it. Let's look at Hawaii. 165 this week. So, um, this movement at Mauna Loa has slowed way, way, way down. And so we're seeing a lot of activity here at Pahala and also at Kilauea there. Alaska. Here's some here's a five five point three. We've add to station. Look at all this on the Wanda Fuka plate. There was a 4.6 on December the 6th. Here's the 4.0 I just showed. 3.8 on the 6th. And a 4.9 on the 9th. So you can see here's one off the coast of Baja 4.4 so it's just more and more of the same now this is kind of got me curious up here in northern Nevada uh, right on the Oregon line 70 here this week the reporting station is Fort Bidwell California but it's obviously that this is Nevada and Oregon. And this is right next to, um, this is Sheldon Contiguous Study Area. So, whatever they study up there. So that's just very curious, and a lot of these were at surface level. Um, or very shallow and so 70 and the last one was on the ninth 2.7 so something's happening up there so we've got just a traffic jam of earthquakes okay. here in West Texas look at this this is a constant here 40 here this week 3.4 and then 2's 3.0 3.4 was the largest So that's my report for tonight, and it did go extra long, but that's okay. We got everything covered. And now we'll bring things back to a spiritual perspective. And we're reading out of the book of Job. And Job can be an example for us because even though Satan did all these things to him he never turned his back on God he always kept praising and worshiping God 
and it can get hard to do when you've got all kinds of problems and things going on but we need to remember that God's in charge and if we are believers we will be guided and protected and we'll go home we'll go home and be with with God and Jesus that's what we have to remember Job chapter 12 and Job answered and said no doubt but ye are the people and wisdom shall die with you but I have understanding as well as you I am not inferior to you yea who knoweth not such things as these I am as one mocked of his neighbor who calleth upon God and he answereth him the just upright man is laughed to scorn he that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease the tabernacles of robbers prosper and they that provoke God are secure into whose hand God bringeth abundantly but ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the air and they shall tell thee or speak to the earth and it shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat with the ancient is wisdom and in length of days understanding with him is wisdom and strength he hath counsel and understanding behold he breaketh down and it cannot be built again he shutteth up a man and there can be no opening behold he withholdeth the waters and they dry up also he sendeth them out and they overturn the earth with him is strength and wisdom the deceived and the deceiver are his he leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools he looseth the bond of kings and girdeth their loins with a girdle he leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty he removeth away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the aged he poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty he discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death he increaseth the nations and destroyeth them he enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again he taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way they grope in the dark without light and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man Job chapter 12 so God's in charge so I'm praying for everyone if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ I recommend it before it's too late and so I love you all I hope everyone has as good a week as possible and Lord willing 
hope I had the strength and the fortitude. I'll do this again next week. I'll talk to you then. God bless you. Go in peace. And good night.